Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. Welcome to Rommel's Love Child. Now, today we're going to have a little look at Armored Warfare for a change. Now, I played Armored Warfare quite a, while, a bit, quite a while ago, um, and it was a good game. I enjoyed it. It was very much a World of Tanks clone. I've not played it in about a year or two years, so let's come back and have a look at it and let's have a little review. Now, a little bit about Armored Warfare. So it was originally developed by Obsidian, but they're no longer involved. They pulled out, I think, or they were fired. Uh, and now we've got My.com, which is owned by a company called Mail.ru, I believe. And there's been some controversy from what I can tell about that. It is essentially a World of Tanks clone. It works in almost exactly the same way. Your tank is a hitbox. You get shot. It takes, when it penetrates, it takes damage out of your tank. Um, and... When you run out of hit points, you're dead, and same for the others. You've got crew members who can be injured, who can be brought back by first aid kits. You've got crew modules that can be damaged and again brought back by first aid kits. Um, you can uh, purchase additions to your vehicles, although you can purchase more additions to your vehicles. You can purchase equipment used to repair tracks, and you get different types of ammo. But we're going we're gonna to come along that, because it's a bit different, and it's not just because the tanks are modern, as we can see here. We've got a Chieftain Mark VI, I've got a Chieftain Mark seven, uh, X, um, and so on and so forth. We goes all the way up to tanks that are basically on the drawing board at the moment, or are just speculated. But we do have things like the IS-7, which is pretty, you know, pretty similar, overlapping, overlapping with World of Tanks a bit. Um, but up at the top, we've got things like the Leopard, the Sheridan, I think is in here now, which is now in World of Tanks, but that's a low level. Um, so... The different tanks often have different kinds of armor. For example, the lower tier ones are going to start to have just steel armor, like World of Tanks. As we go higher up the tiers, you get things like on the Chieftain 10, it's got this steel blue applique armor, which is actually a composite armor. It's rubber and steel. So that has a different effect. And then you're going to get things like explosive reactive armor, full composite armor, and things like that. And these, these give it different protective abilities against different types of ammunition that you might be firing at and again we've got a variety of different ammunition types for example we've got APCR like we do in World of Tanks we've got APDS which is armor piercing discarding sabo uh, we've got anti-tank guided missiles just to name a few different ones and these these different uh, ammo types have got different effects against different armor some of them won't penetrate certain types of armor, some of them are more reliable against other certain types of armor. So instead of having like a premium round, which is um, overpowered and makes your tank much, much better, you have to pick and choose your your shot, depending on what the army you're facing against, which I quite like. It requires a bit more brain power, a little bit more thought. Okay, so that's a bit, the, bit about the ammo types. Now, on the vehicles, we don't get... Uh, country types instead country lines to go up instead we get dealers for example we've got Sofu Wolfie and you've got Marat Shiskin we've got four of those and each of those have got different type types of tanks for you to grind your way up through and of the tanks there are some main types the main battle tanks who have got the solid diamond around them they're generally an all-rounder heavily armored can put out a good bit of damage uh, we can rely on their turret or possibly their frontal armor. Then we get our light tanks, which are often, which are all down, in fact, at the lower tiers, and they are, have the hollow diamond, and like the Type 62 here, and they're obviously lighter in armor, a bit more maneuverable. Um, we also have armor fighting, ve fighting vehicles, which are the ones that have got the circles. They're kind of like your scouts, often. They have things like, uh, if I have a look at this one, you can see, click on preview, you should see it. It's got a very low caliber auto cannon, but it's also got anti-tank guided missiles on. Weak armor, fast maneuverability, quite easy to hide, but also really easy to get damaged. And the last type is, like this one here, is a tank destroyer. And you can cut, get those in wheeled versions as well as tracked versions. And that does make a difference to their gameplay. Uh, very subtly, but it does. It makes it makes a, an impact. 
Another main feature difference between World of Tanks and Armored Warfare is the types of game that you can play. For example, if I click on HQ it will take us to the menu. We can either do joint missions or player versus environment which is where you and several other teammates will team up and you have to complete missions against a computer team. It might be capture the base, it might be kill the enemies, it might be protect a base, it might be protect a, protect a power plant or rescue scientists or something like that. They also have within that three different variations of the standard PVE. So you get the standard one which is for tiers 1 to 6, you get challenging 3 to 8 and hardcore 5 to 10. And you get different rewards. So for example, in the hardcore you get 30% experience, 100% of your credits, but it does cost you 12,000 credits to go in. For the challenging, you get 15% to your experience, 50% to your gold, and 9,000 to go in, whereas the easy ones you get no bonus. The storyline missions, you work your way through a story, they get seem to get anyway progressively harder. Um, at the moment I'm stuck on the third mission, maybe my tanks aren't quite high tier enough, I don't know yet. Um, so that's the player versus environment. That's quite, quite good at first, but it does kind of lose a little bit of influence. But that seems to be what most people play. Now, player versus player, two versions of that as well. You've got base capture, which is 15 to 15, that's your standard World of Tanks style game. And you've got global operations, which is... Uh, 15 times 15 you get a vehicle respawn and this is a bit more like uh, War Thunder where you've got a two tickers at the top which go down, you capture bases, that makes your opponent's ticker go down quicker. Every time you kill an enemy tank it goes down a little bit quicker and so on and so forth. Uh, however, at the moment it's struggling because I don't know if it's most people are playing in the joint missions or the player base has shrunk. I have heard that player base has shrunk. And at the moment, instead of getting 15 to 15s, I'm generally getting 3 versus 3s and 4 versus 4s, which is disappointing because I remember playing it years ago, playing 15 versus 15 and having a great time. Some of the maps were much bigger than World of Tanks. They felt more open, they felt less corridor y. Um, it felt a bit more organic to play. Uh, so it's, it's kind of sad that the player base is gone. And it's kind of sad that they've kind of gone more World of Tanks cloning. And that's how it feels to me, that they've become more of a World of Tanks clone. Anyway, we will have a look at a battle. And the first one I'm going to show you is, I'm going to show you what the global operations like is like. I played this earlier on and it was a loss. We had a bot on our team, unfortunately. And we can see here that you've got objectives. Hold the primary objectives, uh, cost the opposing team victory points. Killing the vehicles, cost them points. Killing a neutral vehicle, cost them points. And you can capture wildcard objectives, and which are like get your airstrikes and things like that. Um, so, you get a little bit of backstory. It says Magnus's intelligence reports that the ISD is about to attack the valley. You capture the fueling facilities. The attack was supposed to be headed by a group of mercenaries. And then you hear ISD. Trufanov is a strong leader that inspires those who are under his command in the name of what is right. Uh, so I guess I'm Magnus's army. The other people are, are Roman's army. And here we go into the battle. So. As we can see, we've got the maps. It's very World of Tanksy. Uh, you've got your tank. You get the standard view. You can zoom in and have a look around. And I don't really know what's going on here at the moment. So let's, I'm asking for a bit of advice. We'll speed it up. You can see the Centauro has gone to a cap point. The MTLB turns out to be the one who's a bot. He drives somewhere and then just stops and doesn't go any further. But I see someone in the distance. Take shots. Again, you're not that guaranteed to hit them. But you've got different ammo types. So, seeing as I've noticed he's a, an armoured fighting vehicle, because he's got the circle, I know he's got light armour. I switch to Hesh shells, which is one of the shell types, squashed heads. Because uh, I know they're going to have a greater chance of penetrating. Now I'm going a bit slowly here, because I know there's an enemy, or two enemies, that just killed one of our guys. I'm trying to stay hull down. But you'll notice that I'm tier 5. Their top tier is tier 7, and there's a tier 7. I'm not going to do very well against him. 
And the game carries on like this. And I will speed it up. As you can see, it's got the same little targeting reticle as in World of Tanks. So it goes red if you can't penetrate, orange if you maybe can, and green if you can. So I've come down here so I can try and get myself into a bit of a hold down position. But I know I've got two people surrounding me. It's not going to end up well for me because they're much better tanks than me. So in the global operations, I die. Bad. But what that does mean is in a minute I get respawned. And then from the respawn, I start hitting tanks and do some damage. So I got a bit of damage on that guy, that, that tier 7 uh, main battle tank. These are the neutral vehicles, 2,000 hit points, that's quite a lot. So I took a bit of damage, can go and get myself repaired here, whilst also trying to kill the tank that's over there, which I succeed, and then to kill the tank over here. You'll notice as well, my name in Armoured Warfare is Monty's Love Child instead of Rommel's Love Child. I fancied a, fancied a bit of a change, and Montgomery was a, uh, a, great, a great general as well, uh, and defeated Rommel, in fact, in North Africa. So... I felt uh, only fitting to pay him a bit of a tribute as well. So we go to capture the flag, but there's two of us against the three of them. You can see that this other guy is camping at the back there. So we capture that. And the battle progresses. It's obvious we're going to lose. We just don't have the manpower. I can't reach that in time. Get spotted. Oop, switch the other guy there. Whee, this is fast. Get circle strafed by a higher tier tank than me. Much more manoeuvrable. And that's basically the story of the game. So, we'll come out of that. And we'll have a little look now at player versus environment. When it loads back in. And I'm going to take out the Chieftain Mark 10. Because I like that. And we're going to go for a challenging one. Well, I don't necessarily like the Chieftain Mark 10. It's almost exactly the same. I can't see the difference between that and the previous Tier 4 Chieftain Mark 6. But we'll take it out anyway. I think uh, I think it might be Chieftain Mark 2, in fact. We notice on here, we have a queue time. So it says, Tiers 1 and 2 can't play it. Tiers 3 and medium queue time. 4 and 5 fast. 6 medium. 7 and 8 fast. 9 and 10 can't play it. So they don't get a queue time. And although it says fast, obviously as we can see it's not going that fast at the moment. I'll speed this part up. So here we go. As at the bottom here it says don't forget to teach your commanders new skills. That's because your commander, when they level up, they level up they, uh, differently to World of Tanks. Um, and you can choose different skills which improve different parts of your gameplay. Like you can do quicker reload or higher module damage and things like that now you obviously you got to pick that by the strength of your tank the crew also have it's a lot easier to skill them up than in world of tanks with the skills uh, which is quite nice um, so you can have a more effective tank uh, and but here we go in operation rolling thunder oh yeah your commanders change between tanks but your crews don't so operation rolling thunder uh, so primary thing, got to defend the waterfront and you can see that's the cap circle there secondary objective is to capture the signal jammers and they are the three like cog things that you can see on the mini map so Kind of just sitting here taking fire at the moment. Not the cleverest idea. But as we can see, really similar game style. In this tank, I'm better off getting hull down. So I'm going to try and get hull down. Go bounce the shot. 
fired a squashed head charge into the underside of the Object 430's armour. Russian bias does not seem apparent despite the fact it's a Russian game, developed game, or at least what I've seen anyway, um, in part because there's no like Russian tech tree or Soviet tech tree. It's, it's just random. So I quite liked the previous chieftain, as I said, but this chieftain less so. So another two minutes. Oh, there we go. Ah, so he's got some kind of armor that defeats the ammunition I was using. Defeat that motherfucker. Okay, so there we go. We defended that part. So now we've got to go and destroy these signal jammers. By destroying the signal jammers, it's supposed to earn you extra bonus credits. I don't know how much it really does earn. Uh, I've not really looked into that. But, you know, it's a fun little thing to do. Now, often, the signal jammers, as we can see there, will be a little vehicle. And often you can ram those to death. If I can get through this wall. And to that is no. Gonna have to go around. Hmm, most unusual. Whereas this has got quite good armour and it's got a good gun. Oh, it really does lack a manoeuvrability. It handles like a slug. A particularly slow, slow, painful slug. It handles like a slug that's just crawled through a shed load of salt and knows it. Furthermore, in front of it, it's got to run a gauntlet of like magpies. So as we can see there, no effect against that Stingray because he had a certain type of armour that defeated the squashed head. It might have been spaced armour, it might have been explosive reactive armour. If you don't know what explosive reactive armour is, the idea basically of it is um, when a, a round hits it, there is a bit of metal with sandwiched, uh, a bit of explosive, sorry, sandwiched between bits of metal. When something hits the outer layer of metal, it sets off the explosive, which pushes the armor pad away, which increases the effective armor thickness. And certainly for things like Hesh and Heat, it's really effective at defeating them. Okay, so second objective completed, the third objective now, time to move on. Defend the museum. I suspect at the same time, as soon as that's done, that's probably going to be the last thing, but it might not be. There's sometimes four, I think, four objectives. You can see now the, uh, the slowness of this tank, which I have upgraded. The upgrade system works very similar to World of Tanks as well. You gain experience, you gain free experience, and you can use that to unlock new modules and then pay for them. So, the last bit to defend. The enemy could also come from behind us from down there, it's entirely possible. It's quite a nice map that to be honest isn't it, you know, I've got these, looks quite realistic I think. I appreciate the effort they've put into it. I don't think it needs to look hyper real, I think that only detracts. So I'll go for the weakest target first because he's got an easy kill, take him out of the game. 
and he's got the anti-tank missiles which always pee me off Stop me ramming him. And Drekig Abstauber. Anyone on any, any ideas what the hell that means? I guess he's peed off with someone. Coming right for me. That's nice. Blast it straight through his armor. Next guy's up. Finish him off. Eight kills. Well, the T80's got ten, so he's had a good game. Just gonna part my tank here. Suspect there are more tanks on the way, we'll see them any second, that'll be the final wave. Generally even the challenging missions are fairly easy to complete. I have to say the level of gameplay is probably not as high as World of Tanks, or at least feels not quite as competitive. Probably because there are fewer people playing it. So it means if you're someone like me, you can dominate the game. Which is an unusual feeling. Although in World of Tanks these days, I tend to finish higher up the tech tree, or higher up the totem than uh, I used to in the early days. Now that I finally play properly so I'm not quite sure how that shot oh this guy a boss in the way must have hit the boss there we go so a mission over you get a little video little cutscene video at the end of the missions it's quite nice until you've watched it a few times Well, the use of that kind of high explosive against an old fortress seems uh, seems a bit sacrilegious. And there we go. So that's basics of War Thunder, so, uh, armored warfare, very similar to World of Tanks in a lot of ways. Um, I feel it could be better. It's a shame that they've lost a lot of their their, their player base, and it's a shame that more people don't play it. Uh, I would recommend it. It's uh, I do I do quite like it. As I said, don't really know anyone who plays it. So if you do play it, if you do sign up for it, um, please add Monty's Love Child, which I'll show as as a friend. And yeah, I try and I try and play it once a day. There it is. M O N T Y S L O V Child. Um, and for those who don't know, uh, a love child is the uh, illegitimate child of a, of someone in 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 English. That's what it means. So Monty's love child essentially means the illegitimate child of Montgomery, and same with Rommel means uh, the illegitimate child of Rommel. Although I'm sure that neither of those people sired illegitimate children. Um, I'm not sure if there is a way to invite friends and to to do a reward, but I'll have a quick look at that and I'll see if I can add it into video. Anyway, thank you for watching this video on Armored Warfare. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, let me know what you think, let me know if you're thinking of getting it, as I said I do recommend it, it's a break from World of Tanks, it's a little less, at times World of Tanks can be a bit hostile in the environment, a lot of people just being nasty to each other, you don't get that here, um, plus you can just buy as many tanks as you want, you don't have to buy garage spaces, which is brilliant. Alright, look forward to seeing you guys soon, take care, good luck, have fun.